Rana. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to talk about Bitcoin and blockchain. So there's so much news and hype around Bitcoin and blockchain and everyone wants to get into the space of Bitcoin and blockchain. But there's so much misinformation as well which exists on the internet, on TV and on newspapers. So I decided to make a video explaining what exactly is Bitcoin and blockchain, how are they interrelated and what are the exciting opportunities that exist in this space okay so let's talk about bitcoin and blockchains today so bitcoin is actually a decentralized currency which was created by satoshi nakamoto in 2009 so satoshi nakamoto is actually a pseudonym to, which was taken by a person who actually published a bitcoin white paper and threw it on cryptographic forums so the whole uh, actually trend behind the whole story behind bitcoin was in 1990 and 2000, in early 1990 and 2000, people were actually trying to create their own decentralized currencies and trying to replace normal currencies like fiat uh, currencies like U US dollar or rupee. So in early 1990 and 2000, that is what people did. But either they failed in the technological aspect of things or I, they failed in the economic aspect of things. So there was no solution that actually tested time, time phased time and was used in the long run. So that was actually the whole scenario before and what happened was in 2008 and 9 we had the financial crisis and this was actually caused by the banks and their whole mentality of just earning a lot of money. So what happened was after the financial crisis around 8-9 weeks after that uh, the Bitcoin white paper emerged on the forums and people started actually using Bitcoin. So there was a link to the Bitcoin client. So people actually started mining. These were really technical people. And they actually started mining Bitcoin, sending Bitcoins to each other. And slowly and steadily, the Bitcoin network gained value. And people started seeing that this can actually replace fiat currency. And this technology is actually really workable. And it's, it is both workable in the technological aspect of things and in the economical aspect of things. So this was the major event that happened and after that the next major event was in late 2013 when Ethereum was set, was made public and uh, Ethereum was actually a really big project after Bitcoin and it went live in 2015. So this is the whole uh, path that has been of the Bitcoin and blockchain industry and obviously we would have new things and new bigger things coming as well in the future and we might know they already might exist right now as well. So this is the whole path and uh, this is really important to understand. Now in Bitcoin, the opportunity exists in mining and trading. So mining is actually when you mine new Bitcoins. So Bitcoin, new Bitcoins actually come into the supply through a process called mining, which is actually a process of verifying transactions and it is a way for to reward people who are verifying transactions and who are securing the network because Bitcoin is decentralized. We don't have certain central authority like a bank who are verifying the transactions for us and taking a cut. We have a community in which anyone can join and it is called miners. This community is called a community of miners and they are verifying transactions and they get Bitcoins in return. So a person can actually become a miner. For To become a miner, you just need to buy uh, buy some specialized hardware, um, some hardware which is ASIC chips and you can start mining and you would be rewarded in Bitcoin. So you can earn money by mining. Secondly, you can earn money by trading. So there are around more than 1000 currencies, cryptocurrencies that exist right now and Bitcoin is just one cryptocurrency which happens to be the biggest as well and the total market cap is around 600 billion dollars. So if you can actually identify great cryptocurrency projects your return might be actually 30x or 40x. So the Ethereum price, the initially when Ethereum was listed, the price was I think 0.03 dollars and currently it's trading around 800 dollars. So the, that represents a return of 25,000 percent in nearly two years. And so this actually shows you that if you are really great at identifying new crypto projects, you can actually make a lot of money and there is a lot of opportunity in this space. So that is what is the whole opportunity in this space and what I'd even like to talk about is that, that there are a uh, lot of coins that have come out and there are majorly two types of coins that are going to coming out. First are the coins which are similar to Bitcoin and solve Bitcoin's problem and second are the ones which I'm going to talk about just in the next moment which are smart contract and protocol coins. So just talking about the first part are coins which are actually trying to be competitors to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has actually mainly two problems. The first problem is of scalability and second is of privacy. 
So scalability uh, problem is like the Bitcoin uh, network is actually very slow right now and Bitcoin transactions actually cost a shit ton of money. So say I have to send money of 50 Bitcoins to you to you, and uh, 40 bit Bitcoins might be actually, uh, say I have to send $50 worth of Bitcoins to you. So I might have to actually be $40 to the minus for verifying the transactions. So this is actually not good. And uh, Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin are the cryptocurrency that are claiming that they have actually uh, figured out the scaling problem and they are competing with Bitcoin by offering a better scalable solution. And uh, in the privacy aspect of things, we have Zcash and Monero. So in the Bitcoin blockchain, when I have, I have to receive Bitcoins, I would have to give my public key, public address. So that means that I, if I say give my public address to my friend, he would know that this public address belongs to Arnav. But if I don't want to do that, say I want to be totally private, I would use something like Zcash and Monero and these use the concept of zero knowledge proofs and uh, Zcash is using something called ZK Snarks and they, are, they have a really great tech team and even Monero is uh, really great and it is being used in the dark web uh, primarily right now. So this is, these are all the opportunities that exist in the Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space. And uh, now moving on to the space which is more technical and which might ex excite the more startup guys and the tech guys which is the blockchain space. So, so the Bitcoin actually uses the blockchain technology for storing all the transactions that have taken place in the Bitcoin network and what a blockchain is, is it, it is a chain of blocks which are linked to each other. So say block number 2 would actually need something of block number 1, block number 3 would need something of a block number 2 and all these are actually linked together to each other. So and if you actually enter or change something in block number 2 then you would need to change block uh, and say uh, you are the whole system is at block number 5 then you would have to change something in block number 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 this means you would need to have actually the computing power very high computing power to be able to achieve that and it is calculated that if you have 51 percent computing power of the whole network then only you can actually um, alter the blockchain network and alter the record and the transaction record that have taken place in the blockchain network okay so uh, this is how actually the Bitcoin and blockchain are related and after uh, Bitcoin actually went out in the public people figured out that this way of storing records and this way of having an open ledger is really nice and this way of incentivizing people to become part of the network is really nice so they actually tried to figure out other solutions of uh, rather than currency for blockchain technology so first we had Bitcoin and then we had blockchain so uh, this is how actually blockchain came into existence and there are actually two mainly two types of blockchains. First is the public blockchain and second is the permission blockchain. So I will go each, through each of them one by one. So public blockchain is actually, it represents actually more newer opportunities, opportunities which were not possible before, which we can't even think before, like the new crypto kitties game. Uh, no one could have thought that such a game would, could be built on the Ethereum blockchain. So these represent a lot of new opportunities and most of the public uh, blockchain opportunities are actually in the smart contract platforms and building new blockchain protocols and uh, people are building actually new decentralized applications like people are building a uh, way to rent out your own computer like can we uh, rent out our own computer and earn money which is just sitting idle in a decentralized manner just like uh, we rent out our files like uTorrent or something like that. So people are figuring out uh, stuff here, then they are even figuring out uh, some stuff for decentralized storage, decentralized insurance and all that. But still no such application has actually gone uh, mainstream right now and every, everything is actually in the development phase. So uh, we have these smart contract platforms which make these applications possible, these decentralized applications possible and the most famous one of them and the most used one of them right now is Ethereum. And Ethereum is actually, as I told you, it, it is part of the major milestone of the Bitcoin and blockchain network. And Ethereum is mostly being used right now for tokens and ICOs to be built on top. And this was actually the main reason at, of uh, creating Ethereum as well. So the Vitalik, the founder of Ethereum, Ethereum Vitalik Buterin, was trying to do something in the current coin space. And he had figured out that there were a lot of limitations with uh, the Bitcoin blockchain. So people are trying to actually use the Bitcoin blockchain to do interesting things and apply the application of blockchain other than currency but 
as mentioned before, there are a lot of limitations that are on the programming language and you can't even do for loops uh, in the Bitcoin blockchain. So people uh, actually created their own blockchain solutions which were more powerful. So Ethereum is actually a smart contract platform. What is smart contract? Is it, is it a digital? It, it is actually a digital contract which you uh, put out on the blockchain. So this is what is uh, Ethereum. And then we even have Rootstack which is actually a Bitcoin blockchain smart contract platform. And we have Cardano which is actually next in uh, blockchain and it is now being touted as the next major step after Ethereum. So this is uh, the whole thing of uh, public blockchain and the opportunities right now are in uh, applications as well but most most applications will fade away with time and it will be only these protocols which would be able to stand the test of time. And it is uh, with blockchain what has happened is the value of the protocol will be actually greater than the value of the application. So currently we have Facebook, Amazon, Uber, big big companies being built on top of basic internet protocols like HTTP and data transfer protocols but the value is only at the application. Those applications Uber and Facebook have the value. The protocol themselves don't have value. But now we have Ethereum and uh, which has actually quite a lot of value than any other decentralized application like Augur or something like that which is built on top and this would be actually the future. So if you are planning to build a protocol it, it would be actually very difficult but it might be really, really rewarding in the future. So this is regarding public blockchains. Now moving on to permission blockchains. So permission blockchains are still being tested out right now and they have an application in the B2B space relatively and uh, they have applications in supply chain, healthcare, logistics and so on and so forth. And uh, even in the permission blockchain we have two types. First is the consortium blockchain and second is the private blockchain. So the consortium blockchain is also divided, uh, it has main players of R3 and Hyperledger. So R3 is actually a consortium of banks. So many big banks, they have formed a consortium and they have uh, formed a consortium so that they can help each, each other and accelerate their blockchain technology programs. So this is the R3 consortium. And the second is actually Hyperledger, which is actually a, a project, an umbrella project by Linux Foundation in which they are trying to get other foundations as well to develop their own projects. So IBM is actually uh, has a project called Fabric Hyperledger Fabric, then Intel has a project called Hyperledger Sawtooth. So there are these interesting applications that are happening in consortium blockchain and uh, in, in private blockchain we have multi-chain uh, which is being used mainly. And what exactly the difference between public and permission blockchain is that in public blockchain anyone can become a miner and anyone can see all the transactions, they can read whatever is happening throughout the network. Everything is, everyone has almost equal power. But in permission blockchain, what we have is a certain amount of people have the right access and they might even uh, have the certain, certain amount of people can read the whole network but and certain amount of people can read only certain amount of network but mainly uh, in permission blockchain only certain amount of people would have the right access only certain amount of nodes would have actually the uh, capability to verify transactions and uh, this is uh, about permission blockchain and uh, yeah I think this is all regarding Bitcoin and blockchain so I hope you learned something in this video. I, this the second part was really technical, and I would understand if you have, uh, if you would have really uh, doubt, really big big doubts in the second part. And I would love to answer such doubts. Please comment down below, and please like the video if you learned something, and subscribe to the channel for future videos in Bitcoin, blockchain, and cryptocurrencies. And I would like to thank Springboard.com for providing the office space for making this video. Okay, bye bye.